Hello everyone, I am Yvonne Kim, Executive Director of Asia Societies Korea, and welcome to our Ambassador Interviews webzine. We have created a program to share the Ambassador's plans for celebrating their National Day and their insights on the country's bilateral relationship with South Korea, and also to address current issues, foster innovative concepts, and share the country's rich cultures. Traditionally, we conducted written interviews, but we decided to take advantage of technology available and perform the interviews online. Today's guest is His Excellency Hazem Fahmy, Ambassador of the Embassy of Egypt in Korea. Ambassador Fahmy arrived in Korea in 2018 and has been an active member of Asia Society Korea since his arrival. Your Excellency, thank you for agreeing to take the time out of your busy schedule to join us today. And it is so great to see you again. We have not had the chance to see each other very often since the coronavirus outbreak, but I am glad that technology has also brought us together in more ways than we could have imagined. So Ambassador, uh, we understand that the Arab Republic of Egypt celebrates its national day normally in late July. Uh, but COVID-19 has reshaped every aspect of people's lives around the world. So please tell us more about the holiday and how it is normally celebrated and how it has altered this year's celebrations. Well, thank you, first of all, for having me and it's very kind of you. And uh, I always uh, admire and uh, have, I'm so grateful also for my membership in the Asia Society, which has been very uh, uh, enriching for me in understanding Korea and Asia in general. Back to your question. Uh, first of all, of course, we celebrated the 23rd of July re revolution every year. Of course, uh, this was not a normal event. Uh, it's, it's a historical event, uh, literally, due to the impact it's had on the whole world. So usually, it's first of all, of course, it's a national day. It's a, a public holiday. And usually, uh, we have a very extensive media coverage of movies related to the time when the revolution happened. And of course, we had a monarchy then, and it started as a coup, and then it was endorsed by the whole population, and then it had radical changes that really was revolution in our society and uh, worldwide. So beside the movies, we have a lot of uh, magazine articles, symposiums, and seminars uh, talking about the revolution and the good and the bad sides and how it impacted the world and Egypt. And of course, uh, it includes a discussion of historical figures of the revolution. Prominent among them was President Nasser, of course, who was the main uh, instigator of it and of course President Sadat later on who was also a member of the officers who made the revolution in, the, in that regard. Of course among uh, its radical impacts was of course Egypt changed from a monarchy to a republic and uh, also it uh, started we still had remnants of British uh, soldiers in our country so it was a struggle against colonialism but it did not stop at there. It inspired the entire African and Asian countries and Latin Americans to also revolt against colonialism. And it had the very big ties. It had a big influence in reviving Arab nationalism and the political identity for African nations as well. And uh, it really had uh, that big uh, global impact. Also, it was uh, uh, President Nasser was one of the main founders of the non-aligned movement, which was like a neutral movement between the, then the capitalist bloc and the communist bloc <laughs> as it was happening and he did it with India and uh, Indonesia. Uh, so it was, uh, as I mentioned, it had far-reaching impacts worldwide. Of course, no revolution is also innocent from some mistakes that happened along the way. So usually in, uh, when they celebrate the day, there's a common discussion, what went wrong, what was good, what was bad and so on. And it's a very enriching uh, uh, day usually for uh, the youth, particularly who have not witnessed this day because Right now, you know, it was 1952, that's a long time ago. <laughs> so, and Egypt is a very young population. So many of our youth did not witness these days or were not uh, there to see it happen. So they're kind of educated about their history and how things happen and how things are evolving in our country. I see. Yeah. So, um, despite the pandemic, the Republic of Korea and the Arab Republic of Egypt have maintained communications through the public and private channels. At the Korea-Egypt Business Forum in June, the need for a joint study on a free trade agreement was raised as an agenda item for the future. So could you please share your insights on current and future economic cooperation between the two countries? 
Yes, of course. Well, uh, currently uh, we have a, a good and healthy relationship in uh, what is called a comprehensive partnership between Egypt and Korea. We have a volume of trade of around $2.5 billion a year. And uh, we have uh, several European companies who had uh, investments in Egypt. Samsung has a big factory in Egypt. LG has a big factory in Egypt. Uh, GS that just finished construction of one of the largest uh, petrochemical plants in, the, in Africa and the Arab world. And uh, of course, we have a lot of other smaller, medium-sized companies in areas of textiles and uh, uh, waste recycling and so on. However, to be very honest with you, the current status of relation between Korea and Egypt does not match whether the weight of Korea economically globally or the potentials within the Egyptian market uh, in that regard. For looking on the future, I can tell you, for example, there are several things we can work on. For example, Egypt is now building 14 mega cities, including a new administrative capital. All these are supposed to be state of the art in terms of the technology used and also and all the infrastructure. And these are all areas where Korean companies are just global masters in whether it's uh, uh, telecommunication, transportation, renewable energies. I mean, you name it, all aspects of infrastructure are there. And I think we need to have much more heavier Korean presence than we do have now. On the prospects for trade, you know, Egypt has a huge network of free trade areas. We have a free trade area with the Arab world. We have a free trade area with European Union. We have one with EFTA countries, with Turkey. And recently we had having the Pan-African free trade area. So basically anybody who invests in Egypt could have like an access to a market of around 2 billion people. I mean, worldwide uh, uh, tariff free, <laughs> quota free in that regard. So I think it's a huge uh, potential a springboard for uh, Korean business to uh, access a lot of other markets. Actually, Samsung in Egypt, they mainly export to Europe flat TVs because it's much more expensive to ship them from Korea, but it's much easier since Egypt is very closer to that. So things like that could be a very big potential in that. And in that regard, that's why we are studying uh, or, or just uh, are about to sign an MOU for a visibility study of a free trade area between both our countries in that regard. Nice. Also, we're Egypt, we're having what we call the Suez Canal Economic Zone. This is something several times the size of Hong Kong, and it's much more strategically located than Hong Kong. And it has a very special law to attract foreign direct investments. And we plan to have it as a logistical and transportation hub for the whole world. There already have many big countries who have in, invested heavily in terms of acquiring big chunks of land to have industrial parks there and logistical parks. And we are currently in discussion with Korea about the possibility of having also a Korean park there, an the industrial park. And I think it should be a very good incentive for many Korean business and investors to be in the region and in Egypt. Also, with the current geostrategic tensions between the two big powers, <laughs> China and the United States, I think uh, Korea rightly so is trying to diversify its markets. And of course, there has been the North policy and the South policy by President Moon Jae-in. And I humbly think that there should be some kind of an Africa policy <laughs> so that make use of this part of the world that there is not that much heavy presence of African companies and investments in that regard. And I think Egypt could be a very good candidate for, to be a springboard for Korean business and companies in uh, this regard. Uh, also, uh, uh, Egypt is becoming a very important country in terms of renewable energies. Uh, we, are, uh, we, uh, we have one of the largest gas uh, uh, oil fields in the world now being uh, found in Egypt and it's giving us a lot of energy security but we're also diversifying we have one of the largest solar energy plants in the world in southern Egypt mm -hmm. called Binbab and uh, we are expanding more in wind and solar and so on these are areas which also Korea is very good in due also to our uh, interesting domestic situation we are trying uh, in a very efficient way to diversify our sources of water so, you know, Egypt has very uh, long coastlines on the Red Sea and the Mediterranean. So we are investing heavily in desalination plants, which is also something that Korean companies are very good in. <laughs> so these are all areas that of a potential cooperation that's just the sky is the limit of what we can do together. We just need some organization and some uh, good communication. And I think uh, going through all these areas, we can do a lot of deepening in our trade and investment relations. That's something that is commensurable with the size of Egypt's market and contacts, and uh, also with the size of Korea and its weight uh, globally. <laughs>
Thank you. And I would like to focus to talk more on the technology part. Um, during an interview with a media outlet earlier this year, you mentioned that there was a great interest in cooperating with the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, which is KAIST, for further technological development in Egypt. So uh, could you please uh, elaborate more about how you envision the next 10 years of cooperation in science and technology? Yes. Uh, uh, first of all, of course, uh, it's very admirable how Korea is on the cutting edge of the new uh, fourth industrial revolution and all the really things related to artificial intelligence and big data and so on. This area and other traditional areas of uh, manufacturing industrialization, we are very keen in Egypt on endogenizing uh, uh, technology in order to have a big uh, kick with our economic development process. We have been uh, having one of our most ambitious um, economic development plans in the last four or five years throughout the whole history of Egypt. The amounts of uh, infrastructure that we have been doing over the last four or five years is just incredible, if I tell you. We are having like 7,000 uh, new kilometers of new roads and the 40 megacities I'm talking about and uh, uh, in education and health, we're having major initiatives. All that led to a very, uh, spa uh, and a very impressive also uh, growth worldwide. Uh, Egypt this year is the only country in Africa and the Middle East that is growing positively 2.7% in spite of Corona. Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't for Corona, we'll be reaching the 6%. Right? So I mean, so this is also, so just it, it gives you a taste about how good the program has been going and how uh, the trajectory has been. So an integral part of this is our search of new technologies and partners in that. Korea has a very big advantage that probably very few country, advanced countries in the world has. Till very recently, it was a developing country. So it understands very well the needs of developing countries. It doesn't have any hegemonic or colonial legacy. <laughs> so it's always good to deal with Korea and to benefit from. And also it does not shy away from transferring technology. I mean, it's very open minded about this, unlike many other traditional partners in that regard. So I think the sky is the limit in how we can deal with that. So one uh, very impressive model of that is how KAIST contributed to the uh, advancement of research and development and the modernization of Korean industry. Mm. And I was extremely impressed when I visited there several times. So that's why we're in the process of hoping to have a model of KAIST in Egypt and we are in uh, advanced stage of discussing that and we hope we finalize it soon. And I think it will have a, probably a major contribution in the uh, socioeconomic development in Egypt. And I don't say it lightly, this is this know-how and technology and uh, cooperation in science is much, much more important, in my humble opinion, than any kind of investments or trade as important as they are, because this is about the fundamentals of moving forward, and this is the infrastructure for development for the future. So that's why it's very important and very sensitive. And I think Korea, for the reasons I mentioned, is an ideal partner for us in that, and KAIST is a very big symbol and... Uh, <laughs> representation of such a kind of development that we could have together. I see. And uh, our last question, we focused on a funner topic. Um, the embassy of the Egypt in Seoul hosted a remarkable and one-of-a-kind Korean-Egyptian fashion show. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what are some other cultural events that are planned for the Korean public? Well, we have, uh, we hosted already uh, uh, twice uh, students from high schools in Korea to come and visit our embassy. And uh, in, uh, in that term, since we're having this year 25 years of relations with uh, establishing diplomatic relations, we have had kind of an art context, uh, contest between Egypt, uh, Korean students to draw something about images of Egypt. And they have done very beautiful drawings and they combine some uh, ancient uh, Korean drawings with some ancient Egyptian drawings in a fantastic way. And it was a very uh, nice, event. it was very heart touching also to see how the talents of those young kids and uh, how they see their own civilization and how they connect with the uh, Egyptian, old Egyptian civilization. It was, a, it's a, it was a wonderful thing, wonderful thing. Also, we are participating in, we participate already in a couple of movie festivals. One was African Korean, one was Arab Korean. And we are participating also in the movie festival with the Korea Foundation in order to expose um, Korean audience to uh, Egyptian cinema. And by the way, Egyptian cinema is, industry is uh, uh, one of the oldest in the world. It only was one year after France. And uh, Egypt, since the uh, movie industry started, we have produced 4,000 movies, which is 75% of all movies produced in the Arab world. <laughs> And uh, we have also our Cairo uh, Film Festival that have, 
that takes place every year. It's one of 15 accredited ones with the category A worldwide by the International Federation of Movie Producers. So uh, we have a good history in that. And also, um, I don't know if uh, our building itself, our embassy building, uh, this was uh, done after international competition, through which a Korean firm won the competition, is designed on the Rosetta Stone, mm. which is a major archaeological uh, founding in uh, Egyptian antiquities. And that Rosetta Stone was the key to deciphering the hieroglyphics language through a French scientist during Napoleon's invasion to Egypt. So our building is modeled around that stone through a Korean architect. <laughs> and it's, uh, we often, uh, actually, we are asked usually by the city of Seoul to receive some tourists or some Korean citizens who come to have a look at that building as a very special uh, landmark in, uh, in Seoul uh, with special historical significance and modern significance as well. <laughs> Are K-pop and K-drama also popular in Egypt? They are extremely popular to, to a way that I'm embarrassed too because many of our young people are much more familiar than I am with all <laughs> the K-pop bands and all the Korean drama. And also a third product that is extremely popular in Egypt is Korean cosmetics. <laughs> I receive a lot of requests <laughs> to get Korean cosmetics from here. So uh, Korea is having a very big cultural mark and stamp on Egyptian society. And I don't know if you're aware, the only uh, cultural center for Korea in Africa is in Egypt and huh? uh, uh, and they are uh, just uh, overwhelmed with the number of students applying to learn Korean in that center <laughs> they cannot keep up with the demand <laughs> for that so it's uh, uh, there is a real passion for Korea and uh, not only uh, my generation would have seen the miracle of Korea being made but also for the younger generation who sees all the cultural impact of Korea and the richness it has to offer to the Egypt and the world in that regard. <laughs> Your Excellency, I would love to hear more, but um, at the time is up, so uh, we must end here. I and understand. <laughs> thank you again for taking your time for us. And again, we'd love to talk more and hear more about improving the relationship between the two countries and promoting and learning about each other's culture. So I'm sure that uh, there will be a lot more opportunities to do that. And it is always our great honor to have you involved with us. And we very much look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you so much for having me. And I wish you all the best till we meet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>